Hey everybody, uh, Portland Chess Shop here to bring you the chess action, and this is actually Bu uh, Zizang. I think he's a really strong grandmaster uh, from China. I, he might even be in the top 10 or something, I'm not totally sure. But he's playing International Master Keep Moving, and this is going to be some sick blitz action. Uh, three minutes with one second increment is the time control that they're playing. And we see that Bu has opened up with uh, knight f3, and he will be fianchettoing his bishop. His opponent will also fianchetto his bishop on the opposite side. Let's see if I am keep moving has a, has a name. He's also from China, and he's Gao Roy. Okay, so maybe somebody knows Gao Roy. So these players are our teammates, I suppose. Uh, two of the strongest players in China. Bu Zizang, he's really good. I'm sure of it. I think I might have even seen him play in Armenia once. Uh, I went out there to go play some chess because uh, it was awesome. The knight comes to a a four. This knight comes over protects uh, f six as well as defends b six. Takes back with a pawn. So now we see Black's king is probably safest in the center with all these pieces as defense. The rook comes over, putting pressure on the c file down down here. This rook came down to go in the same file as the queen. A common theme that we see. The knight decides to come back. I think this makes sense. The knight really wasn't doing very much on a4, so that could be good for uh, for blue, purple, black. What should we call them? <laughs> it's kind of turquoise. The knight the knight moves back to d2, and the bishops are traded off. So this is I don't know. I don't I don't fee and shadow my bishops uh, so often, and I don't really understand when you want to trade off the fee and shadow bishop on purpose on the king side. It looks to me just like there's uh, there's light square weaknesses that could be exploited later on the game. I usually like to keep my fee and shadow bishops, um, but that's because I'm not I'm not you know the best fee and shadow bishop guy ever. I usually just go develop my pieces, go straight for the attack. Anyway, enough about me. Let's see what's going on in the game. So I am keep moving is down on time. Trying to come up with a good plan. How am I going to beat the white player in this position? This pawn, he does have pressure down this down this file, but it's defended by the knight, and the knight is you know keeping guard of that. The queen is pretty centrally located. See, this pawn is actually pinned. We do see a check and a pawn up. So pawn up does weaken the king position, I think. The rook decides to come over, going on the same file as the king. The knight comes to the center. Sure. This rook decides to come up. We see some maneuvering by the uh, by the turquoise player. Rearranging his pieces. He's overprotecting this square. So now it's defended by the bishop and the rook. So that if knight takes, you can take back with the bishop. And then the queen can't take because then after takes, takes, you've lost your queen. So this is defended twice, attacked twice. This is also defended twice, attacked twice. So really a lot of pressure on the position, but purple is, uh, turquoise is able to uh, hold the position. Keep moving. So he decides to retreat the rook. Now this square is susceptible to a knight takes capture, I believe. He's still thinking on it, though. Taking taking his sweet time. Sort of thinking. Now he's down on time. That's just that's just poor time management, I think. Oh no, th this knight has to fall in order for this combination to work. So he does have to calculate the position pretty um, precisely, figure out exactly because now he's down a piece. But he sees that after like rook takes, rook takes, he'll be able to swing his rook down to here and attack this knight, attack key squares, which would be pretty strong. You see, this rook is uh, pretty weak in the defense, so the king actually has to come down to defend this square. And now white has to have a plan to break through because he's only got two pieces left. And a few pawns. Pawns can uh, become pretty powerful. They can turn into queens. That's something that I learned about chess. And uh, that's really good. It's good to turn your pawns into queens. Trust me. So the rook decides to come to c6. Makes sense to me. But the knight is also defending the b6 square. So he won't be able to take here immediately. Oh, but yeah, there's a pin. But after just queen takes, then queen takes, knight takes. So the queen decides to retreat. 
it's trying to hit some more angles. You see all these different ways that it can try and attack the king now with different types of checks and such. And he needed to avoid trading queens because he's down material. He checks here. And now he checks across here. Look at this queen movement. So players are pretty low on time. It's a late middle game. It's not really an, an, an end game yet, but it could become one soon. But down a piece... Uh, White really has to has to attack in this position. He has to prove that he has some sort of an advantage. If we see king back, I think then uh, queen might take. But now the the king is defending the rook, but one more pawn does fall, which is good. So now it's four pawns for turquoise uh, for keep moving against five pawns. So he's got one pawn for the piece, which isn't very much. Does check again. He could start to think about going for... A perpetual type position. He moves the the queen back over. The rook is attacked. Now he has to decide: Do I want to move the rook over or the king over? He moves the king over. Could see a check again. Check. We see that uh, keep moving has misused his time management. He's really low on time, but he does have the one second increment because they're playing three one blitz. So the queen comes back to h seven. Could see a draw, but we might not check. too. Okay, they do decide to draw. Good game by some Chinese. Uh, Grandmaster and International Masters. All right, everybody. So Bu uh, Zaizang is playing against his uh, Chinese colleague, uh, Guy Rawa, I think. Um, excuse me for massacring their names. But they're pretty awesome. They're very strong players, and they're playing against each other. They're uh, teammates from China. So they're practicing their stuff. Oh, this is a good variation. This is a anti-Dutch defense. You take, you play pawn up and actually sacrifice a pawn. I think, did he get the pawn back in this variation? Yeah. So it's just a temporary pawn sacrifice. But uh, in this position, it's pretty good. I think that sometimes you go for a, an early queenside castle. You take with the bishop. Like the bishop takes back, you play queen d2, and you castle queenside and try to attack on the king side. Because the idea is that uh, f7 to f5 has weakened some, some key squares, some light squares, and you can exploit it by trying to attack their king. So the knight comes towards the center, makes sense to me, pawn up, uh, overprotecting the, the key squares in the center. And now, uh, yeah, the uh, Bu Zizang has to decide what he's going to do with his bishop. So he decides to create a fianchetta position. Very logical chess, I think, by the, by these two players. Uh, and we saw the position in the last game, you know, he was able to grind down on some weaknesses. So it was pretty solid in that game. The game before was uh, that I watched. I wasn't able to create a video commentary. There were some, there were some serious fireworks um, in that game. So we'll see what happens in this one. So the queen decides to come to this square. It's defending the bishop. It's also queenside castling is uh, theoretically possible. He does decide to queenside castle, which I think is a pretty exciting move. I, I'm excited. So now we're going to see some, a battle uh, commence where white can play like a4, a5, try to exchange, try to attack down this file, uh, trade off the dark, light squared bishops, just get at this king, while um, turquoise has some possibilities to do that as well uh, with like pawn up, pawn up, and attacking the king. So we will see whose attack is a little bit faster. I think white's white's attack does look promising. Attacks breaks through in the center. This makes sense. Um, when your opponent attacks on the wing, the principle that Nimzovich taught us is to uh, is to attack on the center. Do something in, in the center to deflect the energy. The pawn takes back instead of the queen, creating a position in which uh, this is a backwards pawn. But he could push the pawn at some, at some point. And now there's an open G file instead, you see. So the G file could be used. It could be weak. But he decides to play. White plays A4. Could be going for A5. And then after an exchange, you exchange this bishop. And then you play queen A6 for a mating attack. So we'll see how uh, Bu Zizang tries to defend against this. He plays knight A5. Now, a5 can't immediately be played, obviously, because there's a knight there. Could be going for squares like b3 or c4. So then this knight comes back to cover these two squares. So this knight's on the corner, but it's still pretty active because it's controlling these squares. It could even take back the bishop if it had to. But I don't see this e5 break happening. 
which I do think that means that um, Turquoise's position is a little bit weaker. So, um, yeah, I started to use a little bit of different colors to uh, try to move away from the inherent racism in chess. <laughs> I know it's uh, kind of silly, but I don't know. I think colors are, are fun anyway, so maybe you guys appreciate it. Let me know if you need some uh, some black pieces. So he does decide to play pawn up, which is pretty interesting because of an, ex an exchange could have happened, and then he could have won the pawn. But instead, b4 was played, and now the knight comes back to defend this pawn. Kind of an interesting variation. We see in time, we see the white is down on time with the possibly slightly better position. But time management is, is really important in these fast time controls. We saw that a, a draw was agreed um, in the last game because keep moving may have had a better position, but he was uh, incredibly low on time, so he had to repeat the position. The queen comes all the way down to b5. Here it's doing something or other. It's exploiting some squares. Also this square, we could see an a5 push. This queen moves over. So th this queen is no longer attacking this square. So he's able to move his queen safely. So Because this is now defended once, so he can take back with the pawn, I think. Taking, taking back with the pawn seems logical. You, then you only have three pawn islands instead of four. Decides to take back the knight. Offering a queen trade. Queen trade could be good. He's being attacked a little bit. So queens queens are traded. We'll see if he takes back with the rook, the knight. He decides to take back with the knight. Now the rooks could be traded. I think that Boo's Izang uh, decided that he could hold this position in an endgame, and he also knew that he was up on time, uh, which is a which is a pretty large factor. So the bishop decides not to trade. It comes back. So there's a pin on the knight, but he just plays pawn up. So these pawns are on the same color as the bishop, but it's okay. He does play pawn up again. Has to keep that the, these pawns because it's an endgame. So after pawn takes, pawn takes. He'll be okay. The main factor in this position is really the time, where Boo is way up on time, over 30 seconds. So he needs to continue to play fast, but he also needs to play accurate, and it's finding a balance between those two things is what makes you you know, a really good Bliss player. So Rook does take back. Pawn takes, pawn takes. 10 seconds versus 43 seconds, so this is uh, definitely, f definitely favoring Boo, the stronger player. The Knight comes to F3. The Rook moves up. So if pawns were exchanged, then the knight would be kicked and it would still be three pawn islands, which is the same amount as before. Check. Could see a rook retreat, but he d we don't. We see, a, we see a trade. We see this king com coming towards the center. Now he'll, he has the possibility of trying to trade off the rooks if he wants. This bishop could become good because it can just come back to the square and then out this way, and then it could be strong again. Check. Decides to push the pawn. Pawns turn into queens. That's what I've been teaching people. Here we might see rook here because there's a back rank mate threat possible. But now he might have to defend this pawn. Ooh, how does he defend it? Can't defend it with the king because then this pawn falls. So three seconds against 11 seconds, that's Check. a scary situation. Check, he's going to play king over. Now the knight could take, but it doesn't. There's a retreat. Takes, takes. Now we might see, I want to see a back rank mate threat. But we may not even see one. The king just marches forward. I do like the uh, the power of the king. The king comes back to defend this square. We might see a push again. No, we see the rook come over. Only two against five seconds. Players need to play very quickly in this situation. So, th takes, takes. Now, this is a pass pawn. It can turn into a queen. So, they are racing pawns right now. This pawn this is going to queen with check. The king has to move out of the way. The queen, he queens, and now he takes... His opponent has a queen. Two seconds against five seconds. This is a close game. The player with a queen only has th two seconds, but he's gaining one second per move, which is a gar gargantuan in this position. So the king, king king retreats, but there could be potential ways to push this pawn. We do see a pawn push. We see another check, though. This queen is really going to try and harass the opponent's king. King up. Now he can't play push immediately. Check. 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 We're going to see some checks, that's for sure. Check. check. If he blocks the rook, there could be another check. 
We see another check. check. This could be another draw. Check. The Chinese really know how to draw in chess. No, he pushes the F pawn, check. saying that his opponent doesn't have any way to uh, advance in this position. But it looks like now it's a draw. This is a draw. Come on, guys. Check. 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 All right, guys. Finally. Finally. Okay, that's a draw. Good game. They have a rematch. Round three of this uh, video commentary. So th both players decided to move out the nights. Both the games have been drawn so far. Kind of ridiculous. I don't know. That doesn't usually happen, but maybe these players know each other really well, and uh, I don't know. Sad to see. Sad to see so many draws. Knight decides to come forward. I think they're playing the opening theory pretty far out. I think they they kind of know each other's game plan a little bit. They might be practicing some openings um, that they are training for for a tournament, but that might not be a great idea because I'll put it on YouTube, and then you guys all know how to beat. Booze, Izang, and you know, in a game of classical chess, don't you? You can beat him. So the knight comes here. That you we see that this bishop is being shut out. This bishop doesn't have many squares, but it's uh, defending this knight that's uh, on the key e4 square. Now the knights are exchanged. This knight moved to the corner to attack this bishop. The bishop will probably move. The bishop does retreat. Now we could see an e4 move soon. I would like to see, but we see a d5 supported by the bishop. This bishop is a little bit awkward, but it's okay. Pawn, pawn goes up, trying to make a, a clamp in the position. We see that this bishop is pretty good in this position. It's just attacking d4, which will be a permanent slight weakness. This bishop is also pretty good, though, attacking uh, d5, which is the center, uh, the front of the pawn fence, right? This one's in the middle of the pawn fence. That's why this is maybe a little bit better, because if it took here, it could take here next. So the knight develops. We could see this knight retreat and come back over. I don't know. We could see attempt at an e4 break after you know rook over here. But then I think that this might be a this backwards pawn might be a serious weakness. We could also see uh, an attempt to break with something like b5. Moves his queen. You don't want to commit when you don't have to. Could be some good squares. So this knight is still preventing the bishop from coming to f5. This, it's this bishop's a little bit awkward because this pawn can't move. He co couldn't play e5 even if he wanted to. So white does have a little bit of more space because he has this pawn in his opponent's base on the fifth rank, whereas uh, turquoise doesn't have any pawns on the fifth rank. Rook a to e1. That's interesting. So he is going for the e4 break, but he wants to leave this rook here. So we could see a bishop retreat and then something like f3 and e4 to try to really open up the position. No, we see the bishop is traded off. Oh, but the queen takes on e4. So now uh, white has won a pawn. Pawns are good. They turn into queens. That's what I've been trying to teach everybody. It's the lesson of the week. The thing is, it's like if the queen retreats, for example, then this pawn will fall. So the, the white queen is uh, tied to the defense of d4 right now. Players are approximately equal on time. Uh, Turquoise has a little bit more time right now because White has been thinking. Decides to move his rook off the powerful and pretty productive e1 square to b b1 to defend on b3 because the bishop is also attacking b3. You see that? So he decides that he has to move a major piece. That's why it took him a little bit of time to think about it. Now Turquoise is uh, down a little bit on time. So pretty equal... Uh, Equal match. I think, you know, Bu Zizang might be a little bit stronger just based on, you know, my knowledge of him as a player. But they seem to know each other's technique and sort of they play a really balanced style. They don't commit too much. Um, and they play just, you know, one one move at a time. So queen, queen comes to d3. It overprotects some key squares, some central squares, some uh, squares over here. Also creates a possibility of an e4 break if you needed to. But it seems like in this position he's only going to do that um, you know, at the right time if he's sure that it's advantageous. Players playing uh, you know, a little bit, little bit cautiously, a little bit you know, like they want to 
make sure they're making good moves. We see that uh, Turquoise is down a little bit of time. The queen comes to the corner where it is a battery, right? The, the rook and the queen are on the same file, so they could try to do things with that, like, you know, potentially uh, just later on. If if white's pieces move out of the way, it, they could try to control the first rank or they could try to control the second rank. Um, wait, one of them is a column and one of them is a rank, right? So this is a file, maybe, and this is a rank. Or it could be the other way around. But that's the terminology, something like that. So the rook moves to d1, queen moves to a3. He's going to be moving this rook over here, I think, and then that's called Alakine's gun. Uh, when you have like you know, rooks and queens aligned on the same file, uh, but with the the uh, rook in front. We see that white is really dropping low on time in this position. He's afraid that bishop takes b3 will be played, which uh, makes sense to me. But it doesn't have many squares to retreat this bishop. Decides to move the knight back towards the center. And we could see a take on b3, I think. Which could be good. Pretty close on time. We'll see if uh, Turquoise decides to make a quick move to gain a little bit of time in this position. He's been uh, using his time management a little bit less than his opponent. We will see now he's down on time. It's not good to give away the time advantage. A time advantage is worth a lot. And I, to me, it looks like this pawn is hanging. You could maybe take it, but I guess the b7 could fall, um, which is why he's thinking. But look, now he's way down on time. He's in a critical time situation. Moves his rook over, but he's way down on time. Knight d2 is immediately played, overprotecting this key square. So a strong move played immediately. He's up over 20 seconds now. Buzai Zhang has pulled ahead way ahead but there is the one second increment which we did see in the last game that is a huge factor so the pawns go up uh, attacking the bishop so kicking the bishop gaining two tempos to get a huge center this is like a behemoth or a leviathan or something look at that 8-8 eight, eight, trample island walk <laughs> so the bishop retreats Queen moves over. So we see that Buzai Zhang is playing really fast in these positions. His opponent retreats. He does have the one second increment. Uh, keep moving. Does have the one second increment. But at the same time, it, I don't know. He only has he has like no seconds at all. Like two seconds total. So if Bu plays one good move that his opponent isn't ready for, then he can either run out of time or blunder very easily. We do see the Alakine's gun. By the turquoise player. We see the queen is here. We see the queen sacrifice for two pieces. The king will be coming towards the center. Um, purple has gained a little bit of time. He does have the two bishops and the rook. But at the same time, um, I don't know. The, the queen is pretty good stuff. I think he could have he could have played bishop takes right there. Because then the, if the queen takes, you take with the, take here. And the knight can't take because there was a pin. But uh, maybe just gaining one pawn isn't quite enough. He does push this pawn, which I think makes sense because pawns turn into queens. So he's going to try to um, move the knight off d2, then take here and turn this pawn into queen. So that's logical. We see the king uh, playing an active participation in the attack because it's more of an endgame now. Uh, purple has three pieces, white has two pieces, but the queen is worth more than uh, bishop and rook. The queen is able to take on b7, which I think is an achievement. So black runs at a time. That's a good game. A game of chess is like a sword fight. You must think first before you move. 